like a snowman. Uh, that's cumulus. Well, that one looks like a ho horse's tail. That's cirrus. Well, what does that look like? That reminds me of an early Rembrandt with a touch of all the elements of water, land, and sky. Truly a magnificent array of color blending themselves together with a touch of gradients only a skilled artist could create. That looks like popcorn to me. That's actually Stratus. What? What are all these weird words you're saying? It's the cloud classification system developed in 1803. Hello? I'm in the mood for some popcorn. Me too. But before we do, let's learn, learn about, about clouds. We see clouds nearly every day. They float in the sky above us and sometimes even block out the sun. Sometimes clouds are white and puffy, and sometimes they are dark and cover the entire sky. Different kind of clouds can mean different kinds of weather. And a cloud is actually a meteorological term used to describe a collection of tiny water droplets, ice crystals, and other pieces of particles that hang or float in the Earth's upper atmosphere. In meteorology, the study of clouds is called nephology, and a person that studies is called a nephologist. Have you ever watched clouds on a summer day like a nephologist would? When you look up in the sky, what do you see? I bet you see lots of blue sky and the sun, and on most days, you see pillows of white, fluffy clouds floating along like a big white cotton ball or balloon, right? And as you watch these clouds, you might find different shapes hiding in them. You may even see things like an elephant or a snowman and even an old man. Sometimes you might even see a baby crawling. Watching clouds is not only fun, but it also gives you clues about what kinds of weather might be coming. But have you ever wondered where clouds come from? or even what they're made out of. Some clouds are white, flat, and fluffy. They float high in the sky. Others are low, gray, and thin. They might even look a little green. Scientists have discovered several kinds of clouds and named them. But before we discuss the different kinds of clouds, Let's first discover how clouds are made and what they actually are. Clouds are made out of water. Little tiny drops of water. A single cloud can be made of, of millions or even billions of these little tiny water droplets. And clouds are formed when the sun pulls water up from the ground and into the sky. This is called evaporation. When the water evaporates into the air, it is warmer than the air in the sky. The water then cools down and starts to clump together to make the clouds, but it doesn't cool down to reach the same temperature as the air around it. And because the cold air is heavier, the warmer air of the clouds hold it up above the colder air. In other words, it floats. We will learn more about how clouds float a little later in this video. But before we continue, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe down below. So basically, when the water gets there, the cooler air in the sky pulls the water together and boom! When millions of these particles come together, they form a cloud. But clouds are more than just water. The dust and chemicals in the air can also travel up into the atmosphere and then become trapped inside the clouds. So this means that when it's raining or snowing, it will be more than water or snow falling from the sky. But these other things are so tiny and so small, we don't even see them. Clouds are actually heavy. 
every cubic meter of a cloud has only about 5 grams of water in it, but cloud droplets are also 1,000 times heavier than evaporated water, so they are much heavier in the air. The water in a cloud can have a mass of several million tons. So much for that light as a cloud thing. Sometimes clouds appear to be brilliant colors at sunrise or sunset. And this is due to the dust particles in the air. When we see the clouds moving across the sky, they are floating but they are also being blown around by the winds. The clouds that are being moved by the jet stream can be moving at a speed of about 100 miles per hour or so. The jet stream is a strong wind that blows across the earth. The jet stream moves from east to west and is very, very high up in the atmosphere. Clouds are classified by how they look and how high the base of the cloud is in the sky. Like I told Quinn, this classification system was created in 1803. There are many different sorts of clouds because the air where they form can be standing still or moving forward. The air can also move up and down and at different speeds. Very thick clouds with big enough water droplets can make it either rain or snow. And the biggest clouds can even cause thunder and lightning. There are several different types of clouds. A few are stratus, cirrus, and cumulus. High clouds that form above 18,000 feet are called cirrus clouds. Clouds that form between 6,500 feet up to 18,000 feet are called alto clouds. Clouds that form low in the sky up to 6,500 feet are called stratus clouds. And clouds that grow vertically are called cumulus clouds. Cirrus clouds are high and thin. Cirrus clouds are the most common of the high clouds. They are made up of ice and are thin, wispy clouds that are blown in high winds into long streamers. Cirrus clouds are usually white and usually predict fair to very nice weather. The air at these high levels is very cold, so these clouds are made up of ice crystals instead of water droplets. Cirrus clouds are sometimes called mirrors tails because they look like the tail of a horse. <laughs> By watching which way these cirrus clouds move, you can tell from which direction weather might be approaching. You can tell which direction the storm is coming from by watching which way the clouds are moving. If they are moving west to east, the storm is coming from the west. The high cirrus clouds can move as fast as 100 miles per hour. And when you see cirrus clouds, it usually means that a change in the weather could happen within the next 24 hours or so. A sky full of cirrus clouds usually means the weather is going to change to possibly snow or rain within the next day or 48 hours. Stratus clouds are like flat sheets. That's what I was thinking in the sky. They can be low level clouds, medium level, or high level, or thick multi level clouds that make rain or snow. Stratus clouds are uniform gray clouds that often cover the entire sky. They don't hold much moisture, so they don't really bring any rain or snow but sometimes can bring some light mist or a drizzle. When very low stratus clouds touch the ground, it is called fog. Cumulus clouds are puffy and small when they first get formed. They can grow into heap clouds or become towering vertical clouds, 
This is called a towering cumulus. Cumulus clouds are white, puffy clouds that look like pieces of floating cotton. This makes the cumulus cloud everyone's favorite kind of cloud. It's so fluffy! It's so fluffy! But they don't always stay that way. Cumulus clouds have a flat base and they're rounded on top. If the top of the cloud continues to grow or climb, they can turn into storm clouds. This happens when they grow tall enough for the winds to flatten their tops into what weather experts call an anvil shape. And when this happens, the cumulus clouds become cumulonimbus clouds. And a cumulonimbus cloud means trouble, usually rain, snow, a storm, hail, or even tornadoes. If you see a green cloud, it is highly likely that a crazy thunderstorm with hail and or tornadoes is coming. Uh. Cumulonimbus clouds are large flat clouds that spread across the sky. One end of the cloud might be shaped like an anvil. Green clouds usually mean severe weather. The green color is not totally understood, but it's believed to have something to do with having a high amount of liquid water drops as well as hail inside the clouds. In the Great Plains region of the United States, the green clouds are associated with storms likely to produce hail as well as tornadoes. Do you know what a ground cloud is called? Fog. So how is fog formed? There are many different types of fogs, but fog is mostly formed when southern winds bring warm, moist air into a region, possibly ending a very cold or colder outbreak of weather. Warm, moist air is cooled from below as it flows over a colder surface. If the air is near saturation, moisture can condense out of the cooled air and then form fog. And with light winds, the fog near the ground can become thick and it becomes hard to see. As the warm, moist air flows over much colder soil or snow, dense fog will form. Well then, how do clouds float? It turns out that the droplets of water are very small, but they have a lot of surface area that keeps them from falling. It's kind of like a speck of dust that you see floating in the air. Remember that clouds form when rising warm air cools, and it's this warm air that helps keep the clouds floating. So as long as the cloud and the air that it's made of stays warmer than the outside air, it will float. Clouds are white because they reflect light from the sun. Why do clouds turn gray? Well, as we learned, clouds are made up of tiny water droplets and ice crystals sometimes, or usually a mixture of both. So the water and ice scatter all the light, making the clouds appear white from the sun. But if the clouds get thick enough or high enough, all of the light above does not make it through the cloud. And that's one way that it can make them look gray or dark. Also, if there are other clouds around, their shadow adds to the gray appearance. Now that is a lot of information about clouds. So the next time you see a cloud, make sure you remember everything we taught you in this video and let your friends and family know just what you learned. Hey, did you like this video? Hey, did you learn something new? Then don't forget to sub and smash that like button and we'll see you on the next Hey, Guess What? Can I have some popcorn now? <laughs>